You were just beeping because the door was open. I think it works <laughs> when it's fully shut. Okay. But that's the only time we can pull enough air to satisfy it. But I think the motor overall does not have enough power to do the pulling of the air. So that's why it's going off 24-7. Okay. So that's why when we open like concentrated bottles of ammonia and stuff in it, we smell it because okay. it's not getting pulled. No, no, I will present. I just <laughs> want to take a seat before before we have starting day. Well, here's the question: Where is everyone? I know. <laughs> Monday, I guess. Pretty. Oh, I have cake in my office this morning. <laughs> I took four yesterday, and I made a pound cake with the salmon chocolate glaze, and I did a white almond bark drizzle over it. I have way too much time in my hands sometimes. Come do it. No, no, I have sanity. It's really just my Spanish. Should be in the Spanish. I took French. So I've been in Spanish one on one. It's just so time consuming. I can't. Was it just conjugating verbs? No. The time consuming part is listening to the videos I have to go watch. You actually have to? Yeah. No. Oh. Like they, they make sure that you watch the entirety of the video. Oh. And then inter intermix within the video, it'll stop and it's like physics more. No. It's like physics more. So you can't even just like have it playing back. Yeah. It's worse than physics more. So it makes you interact with it. What was Do you remember we had to watch the videos and then the videos had stuff in answering questions that was points and mm -hmm. check points. Can I do? Um so we could <laughs> yeah. There are a couple of deadlines by the end of the month. Tuesday night. Is that the same one Stellana's working on too? One more. More? It's the same question. So, um. <laughs> so, of course, the dress is to go to bed. Fast today. Oh. No, we have about 60, no, 50% attendance. Not bad. Tells us less. <laughs> Who we are, what we are doing. We will take just one more derivative and depart in his, but I will mumble something for 20 minutes, then we will take derivative, and otherwise then we will depart. So, um, in, in the one dimensional box, we also started one by one. Oh no, we, we immediately got all excited states, but then we were analyzing maybe ground and first excited for dynamics. Here, before we analyze all all solutions, we wanted to get hands on them slowly but surely. And we completed first excited last time before your presentations, and now you go to the second excited. That's it. If you if you know it, then that's fine. Uh, you, uh, well, I don't want to in invite you to leave because otherwise, I will have no one to present to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Dibbler's cartoons, uh, Dibbler's company, and they do um, um, calendars, tier of calendars mm. with some. Uh, jokes that in form of uh, pictograms and um, one of them I saw is like a series of, of three pictograms first one a lecture instructor and students like and uh, it shows like sound waves coming up and they're listening next one the presenter is replaced by a tape recorder put on plate Again, waves are going on and everyone is listening. And third one, everyone in the class is replaced by tape recorder to the recording <laughs> mode. <laughs> oh. Class? This is homework, homework, this is a class. You, you, you saw it on uh, Wednesday and uh, 
it was last time in the email and I will send it as an email once again. Maybe I will take courage, print it and distribute them uh, Wednesday because probably no one will approach it until Thursday night. Right? So I realized that the last part of today's meeting cannot be completed in a, in a given time. So um, your courage will complement my resilience. Oh, your courage will complement our uh, lack of time as an extra credit uh, problem. So we just take this function and normalize it to the integral from plus to minus infinity gives one. And, this, uh, and, and I, I will introduce the answer right away, but you may, sh for extra credit, just short steps. And uh, on Friday, when you bring them in, you probably go through solution key, something like that. Okay. So, who, again, who we, are, what we, are we are in the class of physical chemistry. Our objective is to interpret and predict outcomes of experiments, observables, and we hope that quantum theory helps us on this path. Uh, we realize, as uh, with each day we realize more and more that we cannot do everything, but I feel at least we can, we can develop healthy approaches and understand the, the basic that will help on, the, on this path. Uh, right, we, we have completed free space in the box, infinite in class and finite in the presentations. And you see some connections to real world. Right now in class we are focusing on the things that we form harmonic oscillations. Typically it's interatomic distances. But there are much more examples where this model helps. Our interest and our goal is to go to the time domain. But before we go there, we are um, paying fee to, to the subject by learning the Time, uh, solutions of time independent and Schrodinger equation, which is a standard part in all classes and all textbooks. Unlike standard classes and textbooks, we are taking a shortcut. Instead of making recursion relations and finding solutions as a series expansion, we are going through this uh, scientifically intuitive creation and annihilation operators that help us to get the eigenstates and eigenenergies, and later on, they will bring some additional healthy benefits that I will announce in a while to Okay. So, the weather operators is it's specific enough to focus on the, on the word. So weather operators are abstract concepts, but they are designed to be helpful. So we set up their properties in such a way that they will help on our path. First requirement that they promote system from one eigenstate to another, only one wrong up or down. Another one, that there are two of them, one for up, another for down, and they are set up to be Hermitian conjugate. And another requirement for them, requirement for them is that a product of two conjugate weather operators is most closely related to Hamiltonian. So later on, uh, one will be able to replace standard Hamiltonian of kinetic mass potential onto product of two weather operators. Okay. And the fourth property is if we uh, try to annihilate the ground state, we get nothing. We get nonsense and we use it to, to find it. By annihilating vacuum, we put the ground state, which is our favorite uh, Mexican sombrero. Right now, we are spending a lot of our precious time, resources, to apply creation operator to this ground state. 
Last time we applied it once. Now we will make a heroic feat of applying it for the second time. After we apply this derivative once again, our goal will be nearly complete. So the creation and annihilation operators are linear combinations of position and momentum operators, and the factor between them is uh, this mass time, times frequency. The one that creates has minus, the one that annihilates has plus. And this one is outcome of our previous meeting. First, excited state, which has one, the function crosses zero once. And if you take absolute square, it has two humps and one nodal point, right? Which means it has some uh, non zero kinetic energy. The larger the number of nodal points, the higher kinetic energy. So if one normalizes, I've skipped it, and this material will be naturally covered by whole work extra credit number, uh, problem number six. But normalization for the uh, first excited will be the same as uh, for the ground state. But later on, for second, third, and so forth, Normalization will be different. The normalization factor will be different. And our nearest task for right now is to get just functional dependence of the second excited state. Our mid range task is to get general trend for normalization factors. And it, later you will. C benefits. It's just too, too early to announce, but you, you'll see very strong benefits of all these normalization factors. And uh, here is summary of looking forward in uh, what we will what we will see. If you apply creation curator to an excited state, you will get next excited state and a factor proportional to the number of each state we are dealing with. In the more uh, general, if we go from number n to number n plus 1, it gets square root of n plus 1. If you're fine with this, could move. But please stay just to create an attendance. It, it, it's a major, major thing of uh, today's meeting. And this week, and your homework. Again, summary where I would like to arrive by the end of this meeting, but I was uh, doing a dry run and I realized it is not possible. So we will stop, we will progress up, up to here, even up to here. And uh, if one carefully does normalization, then one would realize that by comparing normalization factors for first and second excited states, they are different by this factor square root of two. And if one repeats this procedure, which we are, we are not going to do for third, fourth, and so and, and, and further enough, then application of creating the later operator is promoting up and accumulates a factor proportional to the number of humps or number of non nodal points which are all, are all connected. So the higher up you go, the larger the factor is up front. Okay. So here is where we stopped last time that the
first excited state is a product of uh, Gaussian functions times linear function, right? And now we just want to apply the equation operator to, to this function. Um, due to least action principle, due to least action not in scientific, in common sense, in personal sense, uh, due to healthy laziness, we are going to combine these uh, factors into in three factors into one. And it will make our effort a little quicker. So this moving the H bar can be replaced by, by L. <coughs> And in the normalization factor, we also can identify this out. So the creation operator is a super linear Linear combination of position and momentum. Here is the proportionality factor. And we are going just to Plug in, replace momentum as a differential operator, and just which will be DDX with uh, some factors. And we will just apply derivative once to this to this function and see what happens. So it's not a very challenging task. You all can do it independently, but we better do it together to develop common language, and uh, it's so easy, at least, it's, not, it's so easy, at least for me, to swamp into factors and, and make an error. I hope together we will not do an error and we agree on uh, functional form of the, of the answer. Mm -hmm. I'll do it So, factor is good. And omega, and probably you can skip it. It, it will not change the um, answer. So, when we have creation, the sign is minus here. Minus i p. For p, we put minus i h bar. DDX. So, omega, and then. So you want to have the x operator on the first term? For sure. Thank you. And then plus five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so minus i times <coughs> minus i. So it will be minus, right? It's the most dangerous thing for me. Um, so here we have one minus i, another minus i, and as a result we have minus h bar d dx. Something. If we like the variable alpha, we can identify it even here. If we put the h bar out of brackets, then we can 
whatever factors and inside the brackets will be alpha x minus d dx right and we are going to hope that we will obtain a second function by whatever factors alpha x minus d dx x minus right does it sound uh, in agreement what we did before sombrero linear derivative Okay, so we are about this place. No, we are here. Right? Alpha x minus derivative, and here this function. Change to go back a slide for a second. When you replace, you it? yes. When you replace it with alpha x, what happens to your h bar? That's outside. Because uh, if okay. alpha, if so, alpha includes h bar, then they shouldn't have canceled out, right? So v. This factor mm -hmm. is inherited from definition of creation operator. The h bar comes from putting h bar out of brackets. Mm -hmm. And then, if we submerge this h bar under the square root, we will have h bar square on the top and h bar without square on the bottom. Okay, and that's for the element. And then it down. cancels, and then you have h bar over m omega, which will be 1 over l. Okay, thanks. And then okay, yeah. thanks. Thanks for good eye. Carefully following. I was not sure that e if anyone cares. Um, so we are getting one term alpha x times x times e minus alpha x squared minus d dx of x e minus alpha two x squared. So it's derivative of a product, right? Which should uh, give two terms. Derivative of the first times second unchanged times first unchanged times derivative of the second. One times e minus alpha 2 x squared plus x and now it's uh, our favorite exercise to take the derivative of exponential so the factor minus alpha over 2 jumps out of exponential as a prefactor right and then we have derivative of x squared, which would be 2x. And then exponential uh, function stays unchanged. Right? Two cancels. 
x square, so second power of x. And the sign here is, is different. So if we, we totally have one, two, three terms, right? And if we, um, we can identify it even here what to do next, but just to have a little break for brains, I will practice calligraphy and to write once again. Alpha x squared minus alpha two x squared. It was first. Then I am practicing this minus sign. Minus e to the power of minus alpha to the two x squared. And here we we had a minus. And here we have another minus, right? So the overall will be plus. Plus alpha x squared times e to the pi power minus alpha by 2 x squared. And we are sure there will be some, some factors that confront it. Do you see any similarities, any opportunities to simplify just mathematically? First and last terms are the same. First and last are the same. The sign is the same. So we can <coughs> remove this one and put factor 2 here, right? And then this is a place where it is so easy to get uh, an error. If multiplying this i times minus i is, you, you get mistake, you may get uh, these two terms cancelled instead of double. And in, in fact, if you apply annihilation instead of creation, then you will get back this Mexican sombrero, which means you get from first excited back down to the ground because of this cancellation. But if you're going up with the sign here is plus two, what else can we do? You can put this exponential out of brackets, right? And then inside the brackets, we will keep two alpha x squared minus one, right? So polynomial of the second order. In fact, if we would go canonical, traditional way that is presented in, or skipped, but assumed in, in most textbooks, textbooks one uh, searches for solution in form of the polynomial multiplied by exponential. And then it goes to first, second, third, fourth power. But we can go to the same answer just by this creation and equation of derivatives. So you see uh, uh, that by Line creation of the rigor, we change the order of polynomial from first to second. And it's natural to assume that if you apply it once again, it will go from second to third. So the polynomial order will grow. So exponential will go out of brackets. Yes. Indeed. So, how can we cover our day? How can we entertain our meeting? Huh? Can we craft it? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you consider it as entertainment, but it is a little easier than uh, differential operators or operations. So, what do we multiply? Again, we are going to plot this function. We are not computers, and we do not care about absolute value of function. We need just to get general trends. Therefore, we are, we are not going to uh, plug in any value of x and compute literal value. We are going just to sketch 
the image by finding where where uh, where it is zero and find um, the sign of the function at each interval between zeros. Signs between zeros. Make sense? So two alpha x squared has zero and zero um, we can put this two alpha as a either as a slope of a function or you can change variable to like square root of alpha times x but now we are sketching this this will be function and it is quadratic function but we do have x squared minus one how does the image of a function call it how does it qualitatively change if we subtract a constant from the function slides down down or up down function slides down right yes or origin floats up make sense so we can keep the function the same and redraw origin or we can uh, make the function according to London it just slides down right? and this function is getting is uh, has to be multiplied by Mexican sombrero which looks this way so can we sketch the resulting function by multiplying this uh, red quadratic function by the purple uh, sombrero so we can look on the points plus infinity minus infinity zero and some points uh, where it crosses right so at minus infinity the function will be approaching zero right at plus infinity it will be approaching zero and if you cross x-axis in these points which we can uh, identify by solving this quadratic equation something like this now what will be the sign of the resulting function what will be the sign in the middle where you have minus times plus negative, negative. and then uh, positive times positive 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 times positive positive and we need just to connect these points. Make sense? Okay, congratulations. You you got functional shape of the second excited state of harmonic oscillator. So it uh, tends asymptotically decreases as you go to very far away from equilibrium position. It has two nodal points and three regions when the wave function is not zero. 
uh, which other kinds of pleasures we can schedule for today's meeting. We can plot that function square. Yes, it's our favorite entertainment. I don't know if it's my favorite entertainment. <laughs> so um, this was phi 2, and now we can plot uh, phi 2 absolute value square. <coughs> We should be this shape, right? What else can we practice for pleasure? Oh. So we can do the y axis as uh, absolute value square offset by energy. Put ground and uh, two excited states, right? Zero, phi one, phi two. So you do see a trend that the ground state doesn't have uh, zero points. First excited has one zero point, the second excited has two zero points, and probably one can guess that number of these zero points will progress and increase. So visual interpretation of wave function tells that the larger the number of zero points, the higher the kinetic energy. It bounces force and back with higher and higher velocity. And the last step before we can um, jump into applications and time domain is normalization factor, which uh, I hope you will practice for the um, extra credit, but I can slowly start doing it myself right now it will i don't know how the grading will go should I give extra credit to myself <laughs> <laughs> or pro probably it will be not time to to go to the end so it will just uh, make your life easier so right now we have a stationary point before going further are there any questions or objections about our goals and plans, or is more or less clear. Where are we going and what are expected benefits? No objections? So either everyone is sleeping or everything is really clear. Um, so normalization. Alpha x square minus one e minus alpha two x square two. So we need to do phi two absolute value square integral dx equals one. And from this equation we need to find m2. What does it mean? So we need to take <coughs> square of of this polynomial. <sighs> e minus d square, right? Four alpha squared x to the power of four minus two times two alpha x squared plus one right so i'm following this prescription 
taking the uh, wave function squared times exponential. If I take the second power, then it is its yielding factor two. That will be minus alpha x squared dx into the one. And it should be multiplied by n2 should be equal one. Make sense? What do we see? Do, do you see any simplification in anything that uh, will make our life easier? You'll make to, to take this uh, integral. Do you see some integral that you can answer without any writing, just uh, verbal address? The last term times the exponential. Uh huh. So, last term is uh, our favorite Gaussian exponential that should be square root of pi, right? If we probably if we change variables in the in the right way. So this one <coughs> we anticipate to get square root of pi in appropriate variables. Appropriate variables. In fact, I will not be able to, to complete it in the remaining time, but when you will try to do it yourself, it could be reasonable to follow the principle of ancient Romans. What was their principle? Divide and conquer. Yes. So how can you divide uh, this problem? We can, we do not need to pull one big integral for at each page. We can take integral by this stuff multiplied by exponential, by Gaussian, this stuff multiplied by, by, by Gaussian, and this stuff multiplied by Gaussian. And um, we need to admit these problems are, they take time, but they are not most challenging in the universe. So it's most uh, important is just not to lose the constant and give right nomenclature to give them names. So if this x to the power 4, this is x to the power 2nd, x to the power 0. Um, I just make a little suggestion to call this integral number 4, integral number 2, integral number 0. Right? And then we can process them separately. What else? The variable. So we are seeking to find such variable in which it will be this one will be just regular exponential of minus uh, some variable squared. So we need to make change of variables in which alpha x squared will be xi squared. Okay. So we, if you take square root of alpha times x, <coughs> we name it as new variable, it may simplify our life substantially. So um, just less number of lines in, in the revisions. Right. And then you can change the uh, replaced derivative of x into the root of this new variable in this way. The limits 
are still the same from minus to plus infinity because multiplying by constant doesn't change infinity. Minus square plus Shouldn't it be n cubed squared? Mm. We may define it in different way. We can call uh, normalization like wave function is square root of n, but if we define it wave function as n two times whatever, then it should be n two squared here. Yes. Well, and then takes all uh, extra credits in class. So, uh, what should we use instead of dx? One order square root of alpha and deep side. Right? And then when we do C these things, they are going to give us square root of pi. So the integral zero will be given to square root one over square root of alpha times square root of pi. Make sense? Okay. And for I two one two squared integral. Say square same and uh, then we we had four alpha x square. Right? Which will convert into so alpha times x square will convert into psi square. So now we are getting a little challenge. So instead of um, Gaussian function, we have Gaussian functions times uh, times square. What is uh, the plan? How can one uh, address this integral? Parts. Yes. So, I will leave this pleasure for you guys. Take this integral by, by parts, and uh, after going through everything, uh, one would realize that uh, the normalization factor will be different from uh, uh, will be different from the normalization factor of the ground state by square root of two. So just uh, Answer is known, but uh, grade is assigned for the procedure, following procedure. And the main message of, of this meeting is that application of creation operator to eigenstate of harmonic oscillator raises it to the next excited state and generates accumulation of factor that is uh, proportional to the number of this uh, peaks or number of neural points. Thank you for investing your time in the course. Looking forward to seeing you Wednesday. I will stay here to answer any questions if they do.